he shouldn't get into the marriage or get into some level of commitment and then realize that he has like three kids or he has a family or he's divorced work church home work church home someone who is of the choleric temperament will be able to check the excesses of a sanguine temperament is he the one if you clicked on this video, it means that this is one question on your mind right now. But before we get into all of those things to determine if he's truly the one or not, what do you want in a man? What are your standards? What are the things that has to be a yes, yes, or the things that has to be a no, no? So with that being said, let's get right into the seven things that would help us determine if he is the one or not. Number one, there has to be some level of attraction. Now, when I'm talking about attraction, I'm not basically talking about the physical attributes of a man, his physique, his six packs, his seven packs, you know, all of those things. Even though those are important, but that is not my focus when I talk about attraction. There has to be some level of attraction. It can be spiritual attraction. It can be emotional. Basically, beyond the physical attributes of this man, I'm talking about other forms of attraction you have for him. Because when it comes to physical attributes or physical characteristics, Characteristics. These things are things that can actually fade away, all right? If his handsomeness or maybe you like the way his eyes are, what if he goes blind? But there are things that are inward that even if anything happens to the physical disposition of the person, that thing he is made of will not go away. That takes me to the next point, which is he is going to challenge you. Now, he's going to push you into reaching the fullness of your potential. That is one way you can also know if he is the one or not. Because that man that truly loves you and cherishes you and considers you someone he's going to spend the rest of his life with will not watch you indulge in bad behavior, indulge in all of your vices and not try to, you know, just help you come out of it and be the best version of yourself. Now, don't get me wrong. When I'm talking about helping you, I'm not talking about control or trying to change you into being a different person entirely. No, that is not my point at all. But I'm talking about a person who is able to identify areas in which you need to improve upon and help you get to this point where you become a better version of yourself. That is one pointer to show that this man may just be the one for you mutual exchange now every good relationship even in marriage relationship is about mutual exchange now it doesn't have to be equal like some people will say 50 50 i give you 50 you give me 50 it doesn't have to be like that because sometimes you're feeling low you can't give 50 percent you can give only 10 or 20 and your partner is giving 100 or is giving the remaining 80 percent so it's about mutual exchange if that man is always there for you giving you moral support he's always there when you're emotionally down, he's there supporting you, trying to lift you up, then he might just be the one for you. Because the truth of the matter is, and this is not necessarily about money. Money is not everything, okay? There are times that you are down emotionally or you're down, you know, you can you can just feel down in so many ways. If this man is someone that is always there to check up on you, to, you know, pull you up and just be your moral support and just be there for you and shows up on every occasion, he may just be the one. Openness. Men are not so verbally expressive like we the ladies okay so most times you realize that you're the one always trying to initiate a conversation it's just like that naturally even in marriage sometimes the ladies are the ones who tend to talk more but when it comes to being open about certain things about life if this guy is truly the one for you he's not going to hold things away from you he's going to he's not going to keep secrets from you for example if it's someone who already has a child or children with another woman he's not going to keep that a secret from you you're supposed to know all of these things because you need to know what you're really getting into you don't you shouldn't get into the marriage or get into some level of commitment and then realize that he has like three kids or he has a family or he's divorced or he's this is this you know there are things that he should not keep things from you so if you find a man who is very open with you you know tells you everything like i said he might not be verbally so expressive but there are very important things in his life that he will take the time to tell you because he considers you as someone he loves cherishes like himself so he's not going to 
hide anything from you, then he might just be the one for you. He is going to compliment you. Now, when I'm talking about him complimenting you, I'm not saying you're coming into the relationship as a half person. I'm not saying you're coming into the relationship because you're not complete. Now, I'm, talk I'm going to look at this from the perspective of temperament. Because we're all human beings, we have our various personalities, our individual temperament, and you know, some temperaments have their weaknesses and they have their strengths. So I'm going to give you a typical example. Let's say you're a lady who is of a choleric temperament and you know your strength is you just walk 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 and your life is maybe triangle you go to work you come back home you go to church walk church home walk church home and now let's say you meet someone and he is of the sanguine temperament and you know the sanguines how they are they are the easy going very cheerful outgoing type the kind that wants to have fun, let's go out, let's go to the movies, let's go to the zoo, just have fun. He's more like an outdoor kind of person. And then you meet such kind of person, you're going to blend because it's almost as if his temperament is complementing yours. And he would want to make you go out with him more and then make you stop living a triangular life. You know, this is not to say that he's going to try to change, you know because he cannot change you. I mean, if he's trying to change you and turn you into something different, apart from what you are, then he might not be the one. But if he's trying to compliment you in the sense that if you're the type that is always drawn to your work, always in your work, and there is no time for fun, there is no time for this, and he's trying to compliment you in that area, then he might just be the one. Because like they say, all work and no play makes Jack a dull boy. So this is just one aspect of an example. There are so many scenarios I can give you, but I can't say all of that in this video, so it won't be too long. So I just give you that example example for you to be able to take it as a point to think about other areas okay and when it comes to complementing each other even the sanguine temperament they have their own weaknesses so you see that naturally someone who is of the choleric temperament will be able to check the excesses of a sanguine temperament because the sanguines are people who sometimes lack discipline but the choleric is someone who naturally is just disciplined that is why you're able to maintain the triangular lifestyle. You know, there is no mistake. It's, this is time for work. I go to work. It's time to come home. I go to my house. It's time to go to church. I like God. I worship God. I go to church. You know, you're able to maintain that kind of triangular life because somehow you have the choleric temperament. So the sanguine is a kind of person that he might set out to go to church or he might set out to go home and then he finds some group of friends and who invites him over for a drink and all of a sudden he's not going home anymore. He goes to, he goes with the friends, have drinks and maybe even sleep over at their place. So complimenting in this case is just him trying to help you strike a balance in life, not because he's trying to change you or turn you into a different person entirely. So I'm just using the choleric um, as an example. I'm not saying you are of the choleric temperament. So that is how it is and even when you get into marriage you know if for example your the, the one for you is of the sanguine temperament you know how they can be sometimes they spend excessively a sanguine personality is the kind of person who goes to the supermarket and then she doesn't buy just what she has on her list she buys she wants to buy almost like everything that catches her fancy you know now, if you have a choleric spouse, he would be able to provide a balance in that area because he knows that, okay, this is my wife's weaknesses. He will just step in and be able to provide a balance in that area. So that is what I mean by you would complement each other. In so many ways, he can complement you. If you're the type that gets angry easily and then when you get angry, you just go from zero to hundred. There is no one that can talk to you. No one can control you. You're like, ah, are they fair? Are they fair? Leave me, you know? If you find someone who is calm and cool-headed, he will be able to step in in that situation and just calm you down. Because if he's a type that when you're getting angry and you're going haywire and he's supporting you, clapping for you, then that is not a good match. Because in my own thinking, I'm like, wow, if you continue like that, you're going to... You know, most of the decisions you make when you're angry are mostly bad decisions. So you sh there should be some form of complimenting. He compliments you in this area, he compliments him in this area, because that is what life is going to be about. Complimenting each other, supporting each other, and just carrying on in harmony. 
this person might just be the one if he's trying to influence you into going to God or going closer to God more because he understands that God is a source of life. God is a source of everything good. The fact that he's even existing and he has a life is because of God. So he's going to try and draw you close to God. Please don't get me wrong. I don't see, I'm not, I'm not always talking about changing you or something. I believe in the power of influence and influence can be from both ways a man can influence a woman and a woman can influence a man so this is vice versa it might just be the woman also you trying to draw him close to or influence him into being close to god because you believe that god is a source of life so this is one thing that shows that he may be the one for you if he tries to influence you into coming to god more maybe you're the type that don't go to church you don't read your bible maybe you don't really you don't believe in all of those things you just wake up in the morning and you just keep doing living your life and doing your thing okay but when it comes into the picture he's going to try and draw you close to god and make you realize that everything does not start and end here on earth there is life after this life and there is god who is above and above every other person and he sees everything so he's going to just draw you close to god that is one thing that is a sure sign or maybe let's call it a green flag to show that he may just be the one for you and number seven the last but not the least you might have a rough beginning or a rough start the beginning of that relationship might not be just so smooth you might it might be a little bit of work you know but in the long run you, you're going to blend in and you begin to have that deeper connection and affection for each other so you know like contrary to what we most of us believed when we were growing up, you know, as young girls, we just want to fantasize about that man, knight and shiny armor. He's going to be so tall, so built, so this, more like a superhero, you know. When you say, baby, I want this, he just does like this and whatever it is you want just appears, you know, that kind of thing. It might not be like that in the beginning. I'll take myself, for example, when I met my boyfriend then, who is my husband today, you know, I, I just, I don't know, in my subconscious, I just felt that this might not be my husband or this might not be the one because I wasn't really giving him that chance you know because of so many things that I consider as um, a no-no because first of all he's not from my tribe and I've seen my parents react to situations like that because of my older siblings so in my mind I just cancelled it that ah this guy this guy might not be the one because he has to be from my tribe before I can marry him you know long story short he's my husband today and I tell you the beginning of that relationship was not smooth so that is why i'm talking about this point the beginning might not just be smooth so but if you're willing to just give it a try be more patient with that relationship you might develop a very deeper connection with one another and he might just turn out to be the one you've always been waiting for okay but someday i'm going to share my experiences the, I mean, the challenges we had to passed through my husband and I before we got to this point it was not really really easy like I told you I had it in mind that he's not from my tribe he's going to be an issue and eventually it became a thing and but to the glory of God we we're able to you know let's see weather the storm and today we're here together so that is the point I'm trying to make. The beginning of the relationship might not just be the way you anticipate it to be. Now, this is not to say that if you're having a very smooth beginning, that he's not the one for you. I mean, I have seen people who just meet their spouses and from the get-go, they just click and, you know, they are just inseparable. They are married, they are happy and everything is fine. I'm just trying to tell you that sometimes the beginning might not be as smooth as you want it to be. So, that does not mean that he's not the one for you. However, if you're willing to be more patient and give it a little bit of time, you might just be able to connect exactly the way you want to connect with this person. In conclusion, I'd like to say that God himself is the one who has instituted marriage. Now, I know that this video is not majorly all about marriage, but if you're thinking if he's the one or not, that means you're already thinking in the line of marriage, or already thinking in the line of you want to be with this person for the long term or you just want to commit to this person so before you do that ultimate commitment you have to be in a relationship and the process of relationship is when you get to 
truly truly try to connect with this person and while you're trying to connect with this person is the opportunity you have to look deeper and to find out if he's truly the one for you or not thank you so much for watching this video if you like this video i'm sure you're gonna like this one on the screen click on it right now and i'll see you there